Hey guys, we're gonna explore a few things that are new in my skincare routine. This doesn't happen often. I don't just go adding things into my skincare routine willy-nilly. I nearly said nearly willy. I wanted to share with you what they are, why I selected them, how I've been integrating them, and my experiences so far. If this is the first time that you are visiting my channel, then welcome, I'm Julia. I'm obsessed with skincare. I also own my own online skincare boutique. It's called The Formula. So between those two things, I am constantly balancing the need to try new skincare products with the knowledge that consistency is key in your skincare routine. The skincare market is super exciting and I'm always finding things I wanna try and test, but I've learned over the years that less is more and I always take a really considered approach when I'm integrating a new product not only because of my skin is sensitive and it just doesn't tolerate new stuff all the time, but also different skincare products and different ingredients in skincare need a certain amount of time to yield results on the skin. It takes time to form an opinion on whether a skincare product is right for you. And also when it comes to curating from my online store, I have to also think about other people's skin types and concerns and preferences when it comes to skincare. So the key principle I always stick to when I'm trialing new skincare products is I keep the structure of my routine the same. So for example, in the morning, I always cleanse with a low pH non-foaming cleanser. I'll always have a vitamin C serum. In the evenings, I normally alternate between a copper peptide and a retinoid. I think it's important that your skin becomes accustomed to uh, receiving those key ingredients that fit your skin concerns. Um, and that you're not chopping and changing those key ingredients in and out of your routine because those key active ingredients are the ones that take time to yield results. And if you're stopping and starting them, you're just not gonna get the benefits, especially when it comes to a retinoid. So as I mentioned in my last video, I have recently increased the frequency of my retinoid and my skin has been suffering a little bit trying to get used to that increased frequency. And I've recently been sick for the last two weeks or so. So I've been constantly blowing my nose. So I've been super dehydrated. So that combination of things has left my skin feeling a little bit dry, a little bit flaky, sensitive. I've had a few extra breakouts. Um, I've just had like increased redness and sensitivity. So it hasn't been an ideal time to be testing and trying new products. So I put a lot of thought into what I wanted to test and try over the last couple of months. So first up, a couple of new cleansers that I have been testing. The first one is the Geek and Gorgeous Mighty Melt Cleansing Balm. This was a recent launch from Geek and Gorgeous, which is one of the brands I do stock on my online store. This is a really beautiful, like no frills cleansing balm. It's quite solid within the pot. Um, it's not a really like a melt slippy cleansing balm it's quite firm when you first get it out which is nice because it doesn't run everywhere it reminds me a lot of like the Clinique take the day off and some of the Korean cleansing balms it kind of has that really lightweight feel to it and it just it melts down instantly on contact with the skin there's no fragrance in it it's got a really beautiful minimal ingredients list it's exactly what you would expect from Geek and Gorgeous if you're familiar with the brand the thing I like the most about it is that it takes everything off like, like just everything. With some cleansing balms, as you guys would know, there's often like a kind of a greasy residue left behind or they don't rinse off completely just with water. But this, this emulsifies beautifully into a really nice thin milky texture on the skin. My skin has not been able to handle any kind of physical removal of cleansers or any kind of exfoliation, nothing like that. This is actually perfect timing to find a first cleanse that doesn't need any kind of like mechanical removal. I can use this without a washcloth. It's super gentle and really, really effective and it has been exactly what my skin needed. Another cleanser that is an exciting new launch from The Ordinary, this is the Glyco Lipid Cream Cleanser. I feel like I've been waiting years for The Ordinary to launch something like this. It's a non-foaming, gentle cream cleanser. It's a cream cleanser, but it's not like a really rich, nourishing cleanser. It's still quite lightweight. It's more kind of between a cream and a milk. I've only used it three times, so I'm still trying to find the perfect slot for it, whether it's gonna be in my evening routine or in my morning routine. The Ordinary says you can use it wet or dry, so you can start off with it on dry skin with dry fingertips if you want, and then add water 
or you can start off with wet skin. I've tried it both ways and I like it both ways so far, but I'm, I'm not sure how I'm gonna to continue to use it and where exactly it's gonna fit in. But so far, so good with this cleanser. It's not causing any irritation or any stinging or anything like that. The formula is an authorized stockist for The Ordinary and I will be adding it to our lineup when it becomes available. So for most large companies, if they have a new launch and they have a number of retailers that stock them in each region, they will take it in turns to give those retailers ex exclusivity over the new launch. So at the moment in Australia, Priceline has the exclusive on this product, but I will be adding it onto the formula as soon as I can. Next, I have a few products from a brand that is new to me. I've not tried anything from this brand before, and I have a few thoughts. The brand is Pecan. So Pecan recently reached out to me to ask if I was curious to try any of their products. This brand is formulated for people with sensitive skin that also want to target other concerns and I find that that's pretty unique in the market. Generally speaking, if a brand is targeting sensitive skin, it seems to be the only concern that they're considering when they're formulating. If you have sensitive skin like me, you will know that sensitivity is not our only issue. Sensitive skin can also suffer from acne or hyperpigmentation or dehydration. There's a whole heap of other concerns that happen simultaneously with sensitivity. It's it's unlikely that sensitive skin is only dealing with sensitivity. So um, I really found the way that Pecan formulates to be super refreshing and really interesting. And the first product I've been trying is the Barrier Cycle Toner Pad. This is a pre-soaked toner pad. You get 60 in here. I was really curious to see whether my skin would appreciate the pre-soaked cotton pads. I have been experiencing a little bit of flakiness because of having a cold and also some of that irritation from my retinoid. So I've been struggling to find a way to gently remove that. And these toner pads are perfect for that. The actual toner itself is packed full of beautiful, calming, soothing, hydrating ingredients. So in here we have um, a little bit of niacinamide. There's beta glucan for calming and soothing. There's some ceramides in here. There's also metacasic acid and metacasicide, which are components of Centella asiatica. There's also panthenol, allantoin, adenosine, hyaluronic acid, and some beautiful fermented filtrate ingredients as well. So um, it's just a really effective, gentle way of supporting your barrier with a toner that's water-based. So it's not gonna add any heaviness to the skin. It's perfect for, yeah, for sensitive, problematic skin. And most importantly, it's not going to impede the absorption of your serums or other treatments that you're putting on over the top. So I always keep that in mind when I'm buying a toner. It's a nice sized toner pad with these tiny little raised kind of um, a textured bits on one side and then just completely smooth on the other side. So it actually has been perfect for gentle removal of those dead flakes um, and it's been a super gentle way of doing that and I've really, really appreciated this product. The next product I tried from Pecan is the Kato Cream. This is a barrier cream, but it's not your typical barrier cream. So it contains ceramides, fatty acids, and cholesterol, as well as a whole heap of other beautiful, calming, hydrating ingredients, which is exactly what a compromised skin barrier needs. But they've formulated this in such a clever way to be suitable for acne prone or oily combo skin. I find that with a lot of brands, if they're making a barrier cream, they're kind of throwing everything that they can at it and they're assuming that you've got kind of dry, cracked, really compromised skin. But for those of us who have acne prone, oily or combo skin that are dealing with dehydration or irritation, it's hard to find a barrier cream that doesn't make us break out. It's, it's like that fine line between nourishing and protecting the skin barrier with occlusive ingredients that are gonna lock in hydration. But when it comes to acne prone skin, occlusive ingredients can trigger pimples, blackheads, and closed comedones super, super easily and really fast. So for example, something like the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm or the Aven Sickle Fate. These type of thick, heavy, occlusive barrier creams are recommended all the time. But if you've got acne prone or oily or even combination skin, something like this is often the worst choice because yes, it's gonna create a barrier and help your skin uh, remain hydrated and protected. But this type of cream has so many ingredients that can cause breakouts and close comedones. The problem I've been having is that I'll get sensitivity and flakiness around my T-zone, 
which is also the area that I break out the most. So until I tried this, I've never been able to find a barrier cream that I can effectively use and like that I can consistently use through my T-zone to help with the sensitivity and flakiness in that area that doesn't cause more breakouts in that area. It's like a catch 22, right? You're using a retinoid for like to help with acne and maybe anti-aging and brightening. So you want to put it everywhere that you're breakout prone, right? which for me is mostly in my T-zone, but that's also the most sensitive area of my face. I've never been able to use those more traditional barrier creams all over my face. I can really only use them in my eye area and maybe my lips, but everywhere else they eventually make me break out. But this, I'm so glad I found this. It's become a staple in my routine. I've been using it now for over two months. There are other things that I need to be trying and testing in this spot. New things that are that are coming out for the formula, but I just, I can't let this go because I found that perfect balance. I also tried another toner from Picom. This is from their brightening range. So this targets sensitive skin that's also suffering from hyperpigmentation, which is definitely me. This toner is a lot more viscous. It's a little bit more hydrating and it has more more of a presence on the skin. It's kind of like a thin milky texture. This one contains niacinamide, gluconolactone for some really gentle exfoliation. Um, it's got jojoba seed oil. It's got some um, amino acids. It's got bioflavonoids, glutathione. It's just a really gentle combination of hydrating and brightening ingredients without anything potentially irritating like ascorbic acid or um, AHAs or BHA. So this has just been a really nice, beautiful brightening toner. I don't think I've been using it long enough to be able to comment on its brightening ability. Plus I have things like vitamin C and retinoids in my routine, which I would attribute most of the improvements in my hyperpigmentation to those kind of active ingredients. But this is a really nice supportive hydrating product. I also wanted to try some of their pimple patches because as we know, not all pimple patches are created equally. So in here you get two different sizes of hydrocolloid patches. These are really nice. They contain a little bit of salicylic acid just to help with clearing the pore and it's also an anti-inflammatory ingredient. They also contain asiatic acide, matacasic acid, and asiatic acid, which are those three main components of centella, which are really soothing, calming ingredients that are gonna to help to take down redness. So they're not just a hydrocolloid patch, they do have a really well thought out ingredients list with a little bit extra happening. They're able to hold a lot, I know that's gross, but they're able to, to really keep drawing out um, that infection and that fluid that's within a breakout or a pimple, they don't reach max capacity very fast compared to a lot of other pimple patches. So I really like the big ones for overnight. The little ones are really nice and thin. They also um, graduate. So the, the center of the, of the patch is a little bit thicker and then they get thinner as you go out towards the edges, which is really nice because it just makes them um, super invisible on the skin. So I've been really impressed with these as well. Next up is my favorite new skincare product that's in my routine and I do not want to let this one go. I don't want to give up the slot that this has taken up in my evening skincare routine. You're gonna to have to like pry it out of my cold dead hands. It kind of doesn't really make sense because it's nothing really new or innovative. It's not like it's got any incredible ingredients or any really new technology in it. It's just the performance of this cream is epic. It's the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Probio Sicker and Rich Cream. This is from their new Probio Sicker line. It kind of walks that line between a moisturizer and a sleeping pack in that it, it creates a really nice occlusive seal over the skin, but it's not heavy and suffocating like a Vaseline or a balm. So I guess in a way I've been like sort of lightweight slugging with this. Nothing is gonna do this justice. You have to experience this. You have to feel it. You have to feel this on your face. I wish I knew what it was about this formulation that makes it so different. The key ingredient is fermented centella extract. It's focused on barrier repair and just yeah, protecting um, aging or dehydrated, dry, compromised skin. I do not have dry skin. Until I started using this cream, I didn't realize that I wasn't using a rich enough night cream if that makes sense. I don't feel like it's left a greasy film like I sometimes get when I'm slugging with like a balm or something like Vaseline. It's, it's nothing like that, but it does a better job at locking in moisture. I, I just wake up with less fine lines. My skin is just like bouncy and smooth and I can still feel the product on my skin in the morning even though I squish my face into my pillow every night. It's 
it's absolutely beautiful. It's not expensive. It's a really affordable product. It's a new release. So I would definitely, definitely urge you to try this. I've only just started exploring this brand. I'm a little bit late to the party. My experience with this brand so far has been really positive. I've tried out a few other things that I've really enjoyed as well, but this, this is the standout. Yeah, I, I can't fault it. I can't fault it. I've had to stop using a chemical sunscreen um, my skin just can't handle it at the moment. Normally this would upset me deeply because it's my preference to use a chemical sunscreen, but I have been loving this mineral sunscreen. This is from Beauty Filter. It's the Luster Mineral SPF 50 Plus. This is the sunscreen brand that I referenced in my last video, the one that I've decided to add to the formulas lineup. It's a beautiful Australian owned, Australian formulated sunscreen company with a chemical sunscreen called Featherlight and a mineral sunscreen called Luster Mineral. Normally in my everyday routine, I use Featherlight as my go-to kind of daily sunscreen, but I have switched to the mineral version and it has really, really helped with my sensitivity. This product is absolutely beautiful. It's an SPF 50. It is zinc oxide only, so there's no titanium dioxide in here. I have this on today. I'm not wearing any foundation. I'm just wearing this and some concealer and bronzer. It's just beautiful. It gives my skin like a really, really nice glow. It has a really subtle tint to it as well, which helps to just take down that white cast. And it's a beautiful base for makeup. And zinc also is a really calming anti-inflammatory ingredient. So it it's been helping with my redness and with breakouts. I curated this for the formula because it's the first mineral sunscreen that I've been able to find that didn't dry my skin out towards the end of the day. This stays hydrating on the skin, like not shiny or dewy, but just hydrating. It doesn't like suck the life out of my skin like every other mineral sunscreen I've tried does. Um, it just keeps a really nice natural glowy finish without being too oily or too dry. And I've just never been able to find that balance before in, a, in an SPF 50 plus zinc sunscreen. It just makes my morning routine super streamlined and easy and I don't have to work as hard with my makeup to try and get my, my base looking nice. If you've not found your holy grail mineral sunscreen yet, definitely try this one out. It's $25 for 75 grams, so it's really affordable and it's available on the formula, so go and check that out. The last product I have added into my routine probably around a month ago, it's the AIM Correct and Glow The Simple Serum. As far as I know, this is a French brand. I picked it up last year when I was in London shopping at Liberty. If you watched my last video, you know the story, how I went a little bit crazy in their skincare section. I'm a little bit underwhelmed so far. So this contains some prebiotics, a, deriv a derivative of vitamin C, ascorbyl glucoside, some amino acids, centella asiatica, glycerin, and I think I paid around 70 Australian dollars for it. So it's, it's not a cheap serum. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just been a little bit underwhelming. I've kind of just classified this as a hydrating serum. I've been using it in my morning routine. As you guys might know, I'm not a huge fan of vitamin C derivatives. I much prefer to use the active form of vitamin C, ascorbic acid, but because my skin has been so sensitive lately, I have not been able to tolerate my usual uh, 15 or 20% ascorbic acid serum. So I've kind of substituted with this, but when it comes to brightening results, I'm not expecting this to be able to do the heavy lifting that a 20% ascorbic acid serum can do. Of course, this little dropper situation is kind of annoying. As you can see, it's a really short little pipette um, and it's quite shallow in here. So it's a bit annoying to try and get product out. The packaging itself is beautiful. It's glass, it feels like weighty and it's it looks beautiful on my vanity. I can't see myself using this long term. It's it's fragrance free. It's been perfectly fine for my sensitized skin. It hydrates nicely, but I'm not seeing any kind of a brightening results or any kind of like long-term changes to my skin. I really was only expecting this to hydrate, so it's fine. Yeah, I'm glad I tried it, but I'm probably happy to let it go soon and free up the serum spot for something new. Yeah, so those are the new products I've been testing. Most of them have been working out perfectly for my skin's needs at the moment. If you guys are interested in knowing about how I structure my skincare routine, then let me know. I would be happy to do um, a video on how I structure my skincare routine and maybe some layering tips as well. So let me know if you'd like to see something like that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.